Hey, welcome back to Engineer's Workshop. We're on to part two of our video series where I'm adapting um, a NMTB30 collet chuck, and it's it's actually for an ER40 collet, to the KNT rotary head mill. Um, in the first video, in case you didn't get a chance to check that out, you got to see me crash the mill, or wreck a three-quarter inch carbide cutter, put the mill out of commission for two weeks, and recover from that, and then uh, just get some roughing done on the on the nuts. So in this one, we continue to finish out the uh, front and rear face, or let's say top and bottom face of the collet nuts. Um, got some mill turning in there, some rotary head action in this video. And uh, at the end, the nuts are almost ready to put the bolt hole pattern in. And with those, you'll get to see uh, more rotary head action and even some work on a rotary table. So let's get over and check it out. I had a lot better luck using the Hanita uh, five flute roughing mill. This thing's like about four inches long. And so I was able to clamp the collet nuts in the vise and just basically mill over half of the overall width of these things. Taking some pretty deep cuts too. I think I went as deep as a quarter inch on some of these. Very slow feed, but it just chewed right through it. It's already been pointed out to me that, you know, you could have just clamped these nuts down flat and used the rotary head to, um, you know, end mill these things round and round. But I wanted to develop a little bit of uh, expertise using the roughing mills. I've got some future projects that have to have some profiles put into them um, that are going to be in some fairly thick stock. So just needed to get familiar with with how these things work i had a little bit of trouble with this one because i left the table feet on and as i'm clamping it down it's it's you know i kept thinking it was scooting but it was the actual table that was creeping along and i had to reposition the nut a couple times so number of passes flipping this thing top and bottom chewed everything down to the rough uh, thickness that i needed and then uh, that enabled me to move on to the next operation, which was to put it back into the vise, or excuse me, into the quill. So what am I doing with this crazy setup? Well, I used a piece of machined aluminum and a spacer that I had to just do a rough squaring of the six inch Kurt vise to the uh, eight inch generic vise. It kind of gives you a good comparison of the, of the size differences. It's, it doesn't look like it's just two inches, but it's about a hundred pounds also different. And the nice thing about it is this uh, handle so the handle actually fits better on the Kurt. It just starts to engage on, on this one. I think the, the hex is a little bit oversized here. But um, got this locked down, and let me show you how I'm going to zero up to do the shoulder on the face of these. Okay, here's my crazy setup. I've got my um, lathe tool mounted here, which can do both a shoulder and a facing cut. And I've got that five thousandths, that's a five thousandths piece of shim stock from the edge of this one, two, three block. This is a fixture uh, made by Joe Pye for finding the center of um, your spindle. So this goes in your spindle. This face is exactly on center with that, uh, with that access. So I can put this in the spindle. I can zero my DRO with the fixture against the side of that one, two, three block, and then I would be cutting within five thousandths of that. That gives me a little bit of a safety zone there. So I can zero my DRO. I could come out over with the DRO, actually over this way with the work, and not cut that shoulder any smaller than what the print calls for, you know, leaving myself a ten thousandths. 10, 20 thousandths OD buffer, check it with calipers and sneak up on it. So let's go ahead and get this in here and maybe you'll see a little bit better how I, how I mean to do this. At this point I have everything just touching. So the center line of the spindle is on the edge of that one, two, three block and I can zero my X. The other thing I can do now with great accuracy is turn this block 90 degrees. And then from this orientation, 
come forward with my y-axis until I'm on center. Now the shoulder on the face of the collet nut is a two and a half inch diameter. So I can come over with the table an inch and a quarter inch and a quarter and if I don't go past that point I won't undercut that shoulder. Now I'm going to dial in another twenty thousandths of uh, so I'm going to go up to 270 and I'm going to go over to incremental and I'm going to zero my X. And I'm going to go ahead and zero my Y. So 1.270 will not undercut the shoulder. And from this point, I actually have to come out further. When I cut these two faces, with the threads of the nut run up against the um, spindle. They did not come out as parallel as I would have liked. They were about six thousandths out of parallel, which means as that last thread jams up against where the thread stops, it's cocking the nut. So I am gonna try a trick that Doozer suggested, and that is to lock tight the nut on the spindle directly with some 242. And uh, let that set. So I have my ancient bottle of 242. Fairly generous amount on here. I want to basically Just be sitting on the threads like that without run up against the shoulder and let that set up for a bit. Okay, this has had a little bit of time to cure. I am going to bring this down until it touches off and just take some light cuts to true that bottom face, take a thickness measurement, and then we're going to take it to its overall thickness um, on top of that shoulder. Five thousandths cut. These first few cuts will be all the way across. It would help if I turn my table feet on. Another five. Okay, we're going to see where we are and we'll know how much further we have to go. Overall height is one and three sixteenths. 1.1875 and we're a good bit above that so we're at one inch three hundred thousandths so we're going to be taking a bunch of five thousandths cuts let's maybe try a ten thousandths cut Do another ten. Forgive me if I check progress a bunch of times. So one, two, twenty two. That's a nice uh, finish on that underside there. And about two fourteen. So about 27 thousandths from finished thickness. Back down to a 5 thousandths cut. Up 
left enough for about a five thousandths cleanup on the back side, 1.1950. So now I'm gonna switch over to incremental mode and we're gonna plunge in only until we hit zero. We have a 50 thousandths deep step. So take another 10 and be very careful and watch my DRO stop the table when I get close. Okay, the first uh, two and a half inch shoulder has been established. Now let's see if this is easy to get off as Dozer promises it will be. Well, it'll do exactly what I need it to, locate that uh, cap washer, hold the tooling in place, just a 50 thousandths deep step. And I've got the DRO set for the correct diameter, so all I need to do is bring that back to zero, and uh, the next nut I can finish off a lot faster. Basically dead on the money here, but like I said, I think I got some face-to-face -face run out. Maybe a thousandths. Uh, there's there's a little bit more. So I got a little bit of a high spot. I can set that down this way and just mill that back until it comes back true. The second collet nut has a rough thickness of one inch, 254 thousandths, just over inch and a quarter. And finished height is one and three sixteenths, 1.188. That leaves us 66 thousandths to remove from this side. It's about 13 passes at five thousandths per cut. I'm gonna take 12 passes, leaving a little bit for cleanup of that back face. And then we'll start working on that shoulder, which is another 50 thousandths deep. Uh, the machine likes five thousandths cuts, so I'm gonna keep everything at five thousandths and then we'll shoot towards getting that uh, two and a half inch shoulder on that piece. Hopefully make it look exactly like that. Well, in the uh, week or so between when I did this nut and starting the next one, I managed to misplace my Loctite 242. So, scrounged around and I hope I do not live to regret this, but I'm going to use some Loctite 574 to uh, lock the threads of this nut to the spindle. This, most people are not familiar, I would imagine, with this one. This is an orange flange sealant, you know, more like a, what somebody would use RTV for, for sticking two mating surfaces together as a gasket. But let me tell you what, this stuff is unbelievably aggressive. I, I swear, if you put a head on an engine with Loctite 574, you wouldn't need head bolts. You could you could assemble the engine and you could run it and the thing would not come apart. It is an absolute bear to get pieces apart that have been stuck together with 574. And even the squeeze out, you know, in the presence of metal, like when you seal around uh, bolts and stuff like that, it, it takes, you know, a jackhammer and a cold chisel to uh, break that bond. So I'm going to uh, use my smaller tube here and just put about two drops, one on either side of the um, quill, 
and run this guy up and then hopefully and well, it looks like I'm not going to use my oh, there it is it's a thicker thicker body I'm gonna have to run this down a bit it's a thicker bodied uh, more like a gel still pretty uh, th uh, thin compared to our TV just kind of mush that into the threads and run it up come back and check that in half an hour and see if it's stuck it in place okay it is stuck what it's worth I'm gonna try a little bit of oil on the surface here see if that helps us any five thousandths per cut well it's a little quieter and it's sticking most of the chips to the tool so housekeeping maybe it helps a little bit Okay, now we got to start establishing the shoulder. So we're going to bring it in until the DRO uh, is about 20 thousandths from zero. Well, I managed to break the edge off my carbide uh, tool holder. So this is just a high-speed steel bit that was uh, ground by my father-in-law. It, it really sharp, so it seems to cut well. I'm going to continue the operations with this. That should be 25 thousandths deep, deep enough to check. 2.560, so I've got 10, 12 thousandths to, of leeway there. misread that I'm actually at 2.610 so I've got a hundred and ten thousandths to remove so I'm going to take a ten thousandths cut and plunge the nut down and then we'll check it again So let's see if we removed 20 thousandths from that. We should be at, uh, we should be about 588, 590. Another 10.
this should be 570 okay I'm gonna go 20 that'll bring us down to 530 this should bring us down to 5 2.510 0.510, all right. Uh, I'll go four thousandths, and that'll leave me a two thousandths cleanup cut. Looks like I'm almost right on size, so I'm just gonna go about a half thousandths more. I've got a two thousandths tolerance on the diameter, and we wanna go a tiny bit under, and then I'll Bring the cutter all the way out across the face and we'll be done. So I've got my nuts in a vise here um, in the top step. I'm just going to come across and uh, dress this top surface till it cleans up and is flush with what we trued on the spindle. I'm trying to indicate center just using the points that I've turned. Uh, three point, I think it was 3.875. Then about seven thousandths on the X. Good nuts. Okay, I'm within about one TIR for that one. So, zeroing on the absolute. Now what I'll do is come across and zero on the other nut. And I'll set an incremental zero for that one. And we'll assume the Y is close enough just to face these off. So we'll cut in two directions so that we're pushing the burr into the center of the nut. We center ourselves up well here. Two passes will do it. And we'll go until we just touch and clean up. So we have a low side. Now we'll reverse rotation of the head to push that burr into the part. Switch over to absolute and come across to my other other location here. Just find in the low spot. Curious how close these are to the same thickness. 1.13 1.13 1.13 seven so actually this one is dead on the money to the print this one is a, a little bit thin by about seven thousandths it's not imperative that they're exactly the same uh, so I'm just gonna leave them 
where they're at rather than take uh, this one further under. I'm going to put a mark here and here so that I can replace these in the same orientation. I'm hoping for within a thousandths or so. If I'm not within a thousandths, I don't know what more I could do to get these sides parallel. Once again, this is a tense indicator. I think we're within about a thousandths. Yeah, see this one's low. Ooh, this one's not as good. So there must be a burr or something on the step of that uh, vise over there. It's causing this one to be out. Five thousandths. Five thousandths still for the back face is not a big deal. And the front face was done um, truing it, you know, being glued onto the spindle. Next thing I'm going to check, I switched over to a long travel indicator, is the height of this step. So I'm going to come around and zero this. I don't want the shoulder to be any taller than 50 thousandths because I want to have some clearance. I'm going to make the retaining shoulder 60 thousandths deep, 51. Well, that still gives me 9 thousandths, and I'm happy with that. Let's check on the other side. 51. So that one does not have to be taken down. I think one of these I left, it was a little tall. Yeah, that one's 58. So this one's got to come down a hair. Okay. So go back and take eight thousandths off of this step. Okay, this time I'm going to push our burr to the inside. We're not going to be threading past that point anyway, so I'll keep that edge clean. Come down until we graze and then uh, dial in an additional eight, eight thousandths. Next operation is uh, mounting bolt pattern in the face of both of these. Well, I hope you enjoyed the second part of that video, getting the adapter nuts ready for the KT ER40 collet conversion. Um, trying to roll right into part three and get this uh, video series over. It's probably going to be about four parts or so. So stay tuned, and as always, until next time, stay safe.